Good morning, everybody. Let's talk about bows and a bow paladin, because as you probably guessed by the title of the video and like likely the thumbnail of the video, this video is about bow paladin. Now, bow paladin is right out of the gate, not a meta defining thing. This is not going to destroy the universe, but it does have some interesting qualities that I wanted to talk about today, specifically regarding leveling feel, end game feel, and just generally what makes different classes special when they decide to use a different weapon type. You see, the standard bow build that most people are using is a combination of ranger and rogue. That pretty much makes up like 80 to 90% of the bow builds out there. Ranger, because they get a million free feats. So if you don't want to be dex based, you don't have to be. You could do intelligence, you could do wisdom. Although most often you're just going to do dexterity anyway as well as getting access to the incredibly powerful Sniper Shot from the Deepwood Stalker tree. And Rogue, because Sneak Attack is really crazy. Sneak Attack dealing a high amount of damage, scaling 150% on your ranged power, which is something that you already get a lot of on a ranged build, as well as being able to capitalize very well by the quick turnaround of ranged characters with their very fast hits, by being able to stack Action Boost, Haste, and Many Shot, and also the incredible amount of double shot you can get, allowing you to turn that 40 D6s of sneak attack damage into feeling like it's 120 D6s of sneak attack damage with the right amount of double shot. So it brings the question like, why would you play another bow build and what are the things that make bow builds good? Because obviously if sneak attack damage scales super well, then bow obviously has to be really, really good with imbues. And the answer is kinda. The main problem with bow is that it's just really the slowest attacking thing you can kinda do with ranged which sounds really bizarre and really strange. Dungeons and Dragons Online has this like reverse understanding or backwards idea when it comes to how bows are viewed in like video games. Generally, your bow characters, they're all over the place. They're fast, they're dodgy, they're able to reposition and move easily. When people think of a skirmisher, they think of somebody with like a bow and a knife jumping in and out of combat. And bows in DDO are standstill, do not move to do most damage, and also, they just fire slower than every other weapon type. Going between a bow and inquisitive is unbelievable how much faster you shoot on inquisitive. Now the reason why this speed matters is because there are several things that scale very heavily with attack speed as opposed to outside of attack speed. And what I mean by that is added damage. Now attack speed is the highest damage scaling effect in the game. However, the reason why there are certain things that scale better with attack speed is because small additive numbers scale better with attack speed because you can apply them more often. It's the reason why sneak attack is better with two weapon fighting than two handed fighting. With two weapon fighting, you're able to hit multiple times per second with your sneak attack damage, so the sneak attack becomes more valuable. Whereas with two handed fighting, you're having bigger single hits, but you're not attacking quite as fast, so the sneak attack damage loses a lot of value because the percentage of your total damage is much smaller. And it's kind of the same thing with bows, where bows attack slower, but they do hit fairly hard, getting a times three critical multiplier right away. And while they have a lower critical chance than some of the other ranged attacks, you can kind of smooth that out by the time you get to epics to get a lot more extra critical chance, and it feels a lot better. But even with that considered, you still have to run into the issue of added damage. You attack slower onto bow, which means that your added damage is not gonna be as effective. Now, funnily enough, bow bows get added damage from Arcane Archer. And Arcane Archer's like, it's okay good for leveling, it adds some extra damage, but Arcan Archer damage is not really what carries you through on bow hits in the end game. Sure, it's nice to have that extra little bit of imbue damage, but dealing an extra maybe 2000 damage with an imbue sounds really impressive until you consider the fact that with a bow, you can hit for over 100,000 damage with one single shot, which I've done before. Uh, so if you want to see, I'll have a link in the description to a build that does 100,000 damage per shot if you really want to see that. So like, if I can do 100,000 damage, I don't really care about the 2,000 damage from the imbue dice. It's not that really that relevant. And Bow's claim to fame is burst. Their sustained damage is not quite as good as some other attack styles, but their burst is really, really crazy, especially when you get to pump out five many shots in a row. So how does this all tie into Bow Paladin? Well, Paladin is interesting. You wouldn't think it would work well with a bow, but there actually are a lot of things in the Paladin tree that work very well with ranged combat. The first is just getting a lot of base hit and damage. The Paladin Knight of the Chalice Tree gets to pick up not only extra damage from Divine Might, but also extra damage with favored weapons and regular weapons on the left side of the tree, which is pretty much more than anything else, getting a huge amount of extra base hit and damage. But on top of that, also grabbing Shot on the Run for free, which does require a lot of feats and uh, the six extra 
range power is nice, a bunch of flat range power, and range power from both your spells, zeal, and... Well, it's range power and double shot from both zeal and righteous might, righteous fury, whatever it's called, the second level spell, which allows your character to have a fair amount of damage, at least range power, pretty consistently and easily. Additionally, the imbue dice that you get out of Paladin, while it's not going to be as strong, it's a d6 versus a d8, it scales 200% off of ranged power as opposed to spell power like the Arcane Archer imbue. And as a bow paladin, you can actually get quite a lot of range power. As I mentioned before, not just the range power from the spells and other effects from the tree, but on top of that, you also get Ascendancy, which gives you range power when you attack undead or evil outsiders, but also from Archer's Focus. And when you take the capstone, you get even more ranged power, allowing you to stack up a pretty huge quantity. You've also got Exalted Smite on ranged, which is just like Sniper Shot, but with a shorter cooldown. And you have the capstone, or not capstone, but the tier five ability that lets you instantly kill any target with Improved Precise Shot, just draining a line of targets as you go down. So at the end of the day, you actually do get a fair amount of damage. So the question is, how is it better if it's just, you know, not scaling the same things? I mean, sure, you get a little bit of damage, but you don't get as much imbue dice, so it's kind of harder when you're not critting. This character is very focused on crit. Well, the secret is to Paladin is it's just tanky and beefy. So on the one hand, you're actually definitely going to be losing out on damage compared to some of the other sources. But since you're going tier five of the Knight of the Chalice Tree, you get 25% extra hit points, which is not nothing. And you also get all of the Paladin defensive spells, like Angel Skin for some extra physical and magical resistance rating, and you can make perfectly good use out of the Sacred Defender tree if you want to pick up Sacred Defense Stance for an extra 25 physical and magical resistance rating. And dealing with the threat out of that tree is not terrible because you can get other sources of threat reduction to kind of mitigate that, which means your character ends up being a lot tankier. And so when I played this character, assuming it was going to be pretty bad, I ended up with the realization that it's just a different feel. Sure, it definitely isn't as much damage in total, but I never felt weak because unlike a regular ranger, during the leveling process, my character was able to dispatch pretty much anything, and I was so tanky and defensive and full of heals. I went with the charisma-based version instead of dexterity-based because I got tomes and past lives and all that. Uh, although if you're playing a paladin as a first life character, as a bow character, I don't recommend you do that at all. Just don't even do that. But if you decide to, um, definitely go with the dex based version, but uh, still I would recommend definitely going Fade Arc Illusionist, Charisma and Damage and all that. It's definitely going to be a little bit better, a lot stronger. But just having nearly infinite cures, tons of physical magical resistance rating, my character just felt so tanky during the leveling process, it was silly even though I was playing as a bow character. And the damage isn't half bad, especially once you get the Exalted Smite, because that's the same thing as Sniper Shot, but as I said, you can just continually fire it off again and again and again. Now I do want to give some caveats here, there are some things that don't work in a bow paladin, namely smite evil, um, I'm sure it's going to get fixed at some point, but unfortunately smite evil does not function with bow paladin, so what I mean by that is that you get ranged smite and then ranged exalted smite. Now exalted smite does what it says it does in terms of the plus two critical threat range and multiplier when you fire it at something, but the actual smite evil text, which is uh, you gain your charisma added to your hit chance, and you deal uh, extra damage based on your paladin level. Uh, both of those things don't apply. So you will not get any hit chance based on your charisma. You will not get any extra damage based on your paladin level. When that is fixed, which I hope it is, that's going to be adding as a pure paladin almost like an extra 35 to 40 damage each hit, which as a baseline is a huge amount of extra damage on the attack. Um, and on top of that, the extra Charisma 2 hit is really nice because if you're playing as a Charisma-based Bow Paladin, you'll probably end somewhere between 80 and 90 Charisma, so that's like 35 to 40 extra hit chance on that singular attack, which with a character like this, with the Trance, with all the hit chance you get from the base core of being a Paladin and the Knight of the Chalice Tree, you're going to end fully geared, you know, closer to like a first life character around plus 160 to hit a... Uh, multi-life character closer to 180 to 190, and then that'll push you upwards over 220, 230, allowing you to hit pretty much everything in the entire game. So the question is, Bo Paladin, should you do it? And the answer is, honestly, it works better than I thought. Uh, I did not admittedly test this at the end game for two major reasons. Uh, one is that uh, the current bugs, uh, where some of the smites and stuff don't work, uh, was a little disappointing, and so Maybe I'll return to it after it gets fixed, but uh, I'm glad I found it and I bug reported it and hopefully it gets fixed soon, but uh, that was kind of disappointing. Uh, and then two, 
I really want to test out Macrotech and it didn't work. So I, uh, I didn't do any end game testing, unfortunately, with this build. So uh, I know that the character is going to be strong because you get a ton of range power. You get a ton of double shot and you just hit really, really hard as a baseline. And the character is wicked tanky with instant kills. It's just definitely not going to do the same amount of damage thanks to the extra sneak attacks. You won't be getting those extra five to six thousand hits on sneak attack damage per shot. Uh, but the Paladin imbue is one of the best imbues in the game, and it is one of the imbues being used by a lot of endgame builds, so uh, it's kind of tough to say. So I don't think I'm going to break any new ground, but I will say that this character, it was fun and a lot more fun than I expected, which is pretty much all I can ask from a bow character. I have mentioned before I don't really like bow characters in DDO because I find them very, very slow. I find the slow attack speed is brutal. Um, there's like a range desync, and then every single time your character misses even one shot due to range desync, it just drives me up the wall. And so uh, the fact that this character was still fun to play is a testament to the fact that it just kind of works. Again, it's not going to be the best, but it's very tanky. It's very defensive, and it's definitely good as a uh, like a primer to, to range characters if you're somebody who struggles to stay alive in combat, for sure. Anyways, I'll pass it over to me with the build. Bows aren't just for rangers anymore. That's right. Become the best bow crusader you can with Bow Paladin. Now, why... Exactly, we're going Bow Paladin, because you can. That's essentially it. I have no better argument than that. It's kind of neat. It's a little bit more defensive than your standard Ranger build. It's tankier. It's got more hit points. It's got uh, more just general defenses, better saving throws, the ability to off heal. A lot of cool utility. Is it more damage? Not really. But it is kind of cool, and you have a cool uh, couple of features here. So let's take a quick gander at some of these. So first of all, Charisma-based is the build that I decided to go with here. You can go Dex-based on your Paladin if you want. If you happen to not have access to Fade Dark Illusionist, you can. And you can be like an Elf or a Half-Elf and just max out your Dexterity. Um, but I went with Charisma-based because I have access to Fade Dark Illusionist, and it seemed like it would be the best course of action. Um, so Charisma is the main stat. Constitution is a secondary stat. I probably wouldn't recommend playing Bow Paladin unless you have like either a lot of Tomes or are willing to go Charisma-based. The reason is that you need Dexterity for a lot of the um, like Bow feats and stuff. So for me, I, I can start with a uh, 14 dex and take everything, but you might not be able to do that depending on whether you have tomes and what have you. So again, Bow Paladin is probably some, not a starter for sure, um, but if you were to use it as a starter, you want to have more decks uh, to get everything you want. As far as skills go, they don't really matter. Uh, I use Huge Magic Device and Jump because uh, these are the two most important ones. Huge Magic Device is good for all sorts of different skills, abilities, for casting greater heroism and other things. And then Jump, because jumping is good. You got to jump places, jump on top of stuff. Um, get out of range, so I like having jump. Then I put heal and swim as secondaries. Don't really matter. As far as the actual feats go, uh, you're basically just taking all the ranged combat feats. Uh, so you've got rapid shot, precise shot, point blank shot, many shot, and improved precise shot. That's five of your seven feats right there. Um, so in order of the ones that I took, I took point blank shot, rapid shot, many shot, precise shot, and improved precise shot. However, along the way, I took two different things as breakdowns. Uh, first, as far as actual um, spellcasting feats, because I'm using Fade Dark Illusionist, I need to take Magical Training. Now, once you get into Epics, you don't need to take Magical Training anymore. Instead, you just go into Fate Singer, uh, dump one point in here, which gives you access to Magical Training, and then you're done. So you don't have to, uh, you can unspec Magical Training here and instead take Precision if you want at that point, and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, and that's what I would do once you get to 20 is remove this and get Precision, because you can just put one point in the Fate Singer and have that. Um, and the other feat that I took is the martial feat improved critical range. Uh, as far as epics, I'm only taking this. I only took this character 20. But if you were to play this character all the way through epics, you just take the standard set of ranged feats. So that's like combat archery at 21. Uh, you know, double shot, uh, extra damage. You don't really need, uh, or not the extra damage, the helpless damage. You don't need anything that actually pierces anything uh, with this character. And we'll go to the enhancements in just a second here. But you don't need anything that actually pierces. As a result, so you don't have to use like Pierce Adamantine or Pierce Cold Iron uh, with this build since you get pretty much all of the bypass all of the time. So instead, that leaves you open to just more offensive feats. Um, so you just take, pretty much just take everything that does damage because you're an archer and you're not going to be in melee range anyway. As far as your actual spells go, these are the only ones that matter. Uh, Bless gives you hit chance. Uh, Righteous Command gives you damage. Angel Skin gives you physical and magical resistance rating. Prayer gives you damage. Holy Sword gives you damage. And Zeal gives you damage. The only extra one I would add on top of this is like Death Ward. But outside of that, every other, these are the only spells you need, so that's why you don't need to worry about these extra slots. They're not really that important. Uh, enhancements. So let's take a breakdown. So you're going to notice something weird. 
which is that my character is not actually using the uh, Horizon Walker tree. Uh, the main reason for that is because I don't think it adds a ton of benefit here. One of the main reasons why Horizon Walker is crazy good, well, one of the two reasons, is that, number one, you get, uh, you can't see it behind the chat because I'm stupid, but the capstone has an, you can't see the capstone? I have to move this? Can I move this here? Yes, I can. Okay, the capstone has an ability that gives you plus two maximum many shot charges, so better burst damage, and you get favorite enemy marked targets, you get favorite enemy damage bonus against your marked targets. For every favorite enemy you have, you get two more damage against all favorite enemies. As a result, if you play this as like a ranger adjacent type character, you end up with about 10 favorite enemies, giving you about 20 extra damage per shot against your marked target, which is a gigantic number, on top of the fact that your marked target also like reduces enemies' movement speed and their armor class and their fortification and all sorts of stuff, making it a very, very good ability to use and it really hampers enemy damage. However, the other reason why you use it is for this ability up here, Improved Archer's Focus, which gives you double shot as well as um, some extra uh, stacks of Archer's Focus and extra 10 stacks for an extra 50 ranged power, which is pretty cool. However, since I'm playing as a Paladin, I get Zeal, which gives 10 double shot anyway, over what I might get out of a class like a Ranger that doesn't get the extra double shot anywhere other than Tier 5. And instead of Archer's Focus, my character gets access to Knight of the Chalice. With the Ascendancy ability, you get 3 million range power every time you shoot a guy, and that's pretty good because it's Undead or Evil Outsiders, which are very, very common at the end game. Before the end game, they're not as common, but when you're in an end game quest, it's either undead or evil outsiders, and maybe constructs in the middle, but mostly one of those two, especially any raid environments. So you're like gonna always have them. Additionally, Champion of Good lets us stacks up to 25 times, meaning that while you won't be getting the uh, 25 stacks of Archer's Focus, you'll get an extra 45 range, or what, 25 stacks of this is uh, 75 range power, so it ends up actually being more terms of benefit if you have this fully stacked less if you don't obviously but you know kind of goes in between there on top of giving the sick imbue dice paladin slayer people also gives you a imbue that scales off 200 percent range power so stack a bunch of range power and you're hitting people pretty hard with this imbue and these got general cool paladin stuff you have ranged divine sacrifice you have the ranged exalted smite the ranged holy retribution shot that instantly kills everything you hit and with improved precise shot it's an instant kill line which just kills every evil creature in a direct line in front of you and normally this is difficult to stack because you need sundered dcs and if i'm playing a ranged character i don't have sundering dcs because you're not using like any of the combat tactics it's not an item you use except i'm a paladin i get divine might which gives you a huge amount of extra tactical dcs based off of your charisma so at the end of the day, you actually still get to use all these things. It's one of the reasons why I went with Charisma in the first place. However, I did go Wood Elf here because I wanted to try out Arcane Archer for the extra imbued dice. I'm not certain that this is the best way to go about it. The imbued dice is nice and it pairs well with Strati Champion. So I like this, but it's kind of expensive for what you have to spend on it. Um, and once you get to level 30, you're going to be using the tier 5 of the Sharati Champion tree. And Sharati Champion gives you access to Feywild Attunement, so you're always considered to be in uh, point blank range which means you don't need any of this elf stuff. So you could, if you wanted, save 13 points and 14 points and instead put all of those points into Horizon Walker and grab like 21 points here for the Dauntless marking, get uh, Hunter's Focus, get two places at once and really dial down on the physical damage, which if I'm being honest, it's probably better than this whole Wood Elf Arcane Archer thing. Um, so you're gonna end up getting better outcomes anyway. However, I just wanted to test this out for leveling and see how it would actually fit. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy with this. As far as the progression went, it was fairly straightforward. Uh, the first thing I got was Fader Collusionist. I got uh, the Charisma and damage right away as soon as I could. And then once I had this, then I just put the rest of my points into the Knight of the Chalice. And then once that was done, I put the rest of my points into Wood Elf to unlock Arcane Archer. And then once this was done, I put points into Vistani. Literally in this order. So this tree filled out, this tree filled out, this tree filled out, this tree filled out, this tree filled out. Just straight up, that's how I did it. Um, and it just made the most sense to me. Uh, and that's kind of how I ran through the game with it. Now, as far as epics go, obviously I didn't kind of run through epics, so it's kind of a little bit hard for me to give you a good assessment about what you should do. However, this is what I would do. Shiradi Champion, all the way up here. You're going to grab the mantle because it's super good with ranged weapons. You're going to grab the mantle effect here, Stay Loud. The reason why you want Stay Loud is it adds sonic damage to your attacks, which normally isn't super relevant, but Fate Singer is not really good because it gives you, like, range power and stuff like that, which is nice to have. But on top of that, you get Harmonic Resonance, which makes it so whenever you attack targets, they have a chance to reduce their armor class by five, which is always nice, as well as making them take extra damage from Sonic. Uh, and that is really good because that scales this Sonic damage. So it's nice, kind it goes together. And you get the Magical Training. Although I think Shroudy, Tr Shroudy Champion also gives Magical Training. You don't necessarily need to do that. You could also go light if you wanted to stick with the general theme. 
um, which is also perfectly fine. So kind of go whichever direction you think is the most appropriate in the moment between those two options. And then for your third option, you're going to land in one of two camps. You're probably going to go either Legendary Dreadnought if you want to pick up the extra action boost for your action boost haste, which is very good with range attacks, as well as strike twice for the double strike and double shot and possibly some more maximum dex bonus. Or alternatively, you're going to be going into the uh, Shadow Dancer tree, which is the same thing, except a, you can get Threat Reduction, which is really important on a ranged character. Sneak Attack Dice, which just gives you more damage. The same uh, double strike and double shot. It's just, well, 1% less double shot. But now you're not getting the action boost bonus, but instead you're picking up a lot more sneak attack dice, as well as evasion, which you don't have, and you're probably going to be wearing light armor on a build like this, as well as dimension doors. So somewhere around there. All your points in Shradi, points in Shadow Dancer, and points in Fatesinger. I mean, heck, if you're going to go with just light, light damage on here instead, if you want to stay all in on the light damage, you don't care about this Sonic thing, you could even drop Fatesinger and then just go with both. Dreadnought for the uh, double shot and the extra action boost, Shadow Dancer for the double shot and the sneak attack, and then Shradi Champion for all of the damage and what have you. And that's what I would do there. As far as equipment goes, it's pretty straightforward. Get a bow, put it on, uh, do damage. I used the Nick longbow from level 2 to 10. And from 10 to 20, I used the Barovian longbow. It's good enough. Hit people with it. Uh, you want charisma items. So Candle Crafting can help you out there. Charisma and Cypher Charisma and all that. Uh, any charisma item you can pick up. Then you also want some uh, deadly and accuracy items. Just let you hit targets, which is really nice if you can. Uh, get along there and do that. I liked having a healing item, so swapping my healing items out, so healing lore and devotion, I'd always have one of those on me, because that was pretty nice to have, and I enjoyed that. Uh, sheltering, if you can get that, and constitution is always good. Again, Candle Crafting, very good for the leveling process. That's pretty much all you really need. Like, constitution, charisma, hit and damage, healing spell power, and then, like, physical magical resistance rating. Everything else doesn't really matter too much, and uh, it was... Pretty good. EA Mantle for light damage could be good. EA Mantle doesn't proc off attacks, so it's not very good, um, unfortunately. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I would do with the character if you want to play Bow Paladin. Obviously, this is not going to contain like a full endgame gear set for Paladin, and I probably should have done more testing with this to get it all the way through. But as a leveling build, um, in the preamble, I kind of went into this a little bit more, but as a leveling build, I felt like this level's pretty much slower than your regular Ranger, and it has potential to do massive single target um, damage at the end game which is where it would be best served. I just didn't do that because I was excited about Vecna Unleashed and I wanted to play the new bard that I kind of rolled around in my old skull and looked at some different pieces. So I'm going to be doing that instead. Uh, so expect Thunderbard soon. But with that's it. That's all you have today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, that's great. I'm really happy to hear that. That makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Um, let me know if there's any cool ideas or builds you want to see in the future. I'm not going to do most of them because... A build takes like two weeks to put together and it's really time consuming, but I'll do some of them. Like the next build, which was recommended by a viewer. Thank you, bye bye. Eat your vegetables, brush your teeth, and uh, check underneath your bed before you go to bed tonight in case there's a monster under there. You never know.